movement is for moving objects. This can either be large or precise movements that can be set with increment values. This value works by how many studs the object moves. This means that the larger the increment, the more it moves, and the smaller the increment, the less it moves. I personally have mine set to 0.025 as the base level, however I may sometimes go to as small as 0.005 for a very precise movement. There are also three axes you can use for moving, global, local, and last. Global axes move based on x, y, and z coordinates. You can find out which way the directions are facing with the view selector tool in the view tab. Local axes move based on the direction its surface is facing. This means that if the surface of your object is facing a certain direction, it will not move using that direction. And for last axes, I'm not exactly sure as to what it does, but it can swap from either using global or local axes. Resizing is for resizing objects. Just like movement, it can either be large or precise by using increment values. I personally have my base set to 0.05, but I may go smaller for specific situations. There are two directions you can resize with, normal and both. Normal resizing is for resizing one side. This moves the object's location. Both resizing is for resizing both sides of the object that you are changing. This means that the opposite side of the object also resizes your side that you are changing. Rotation is for rotating objects. This means that the object can be rotated in this direction. There are three pivots that you can use for rotation. Center, local, and last. Center rotation rotates the object only by its center. Local rotation works similarly to how local movement axes work. It rotates the object based on the direction of the side you choose. Last rotation is also one I am unfamiliar with, but it can swap between center and local rotation. The paint tool is for changing the color of objects. There are many base colors you can choose, but you can also make your own color by using the color palette and sliders. The first slider is for changing the color, the second slider is for changing the saturation, and finally the third slider is for changing the darkness. The material tool is for selecting the material of your object along with its transparency and reflectance value. Here's what each material looks like. Transparency changes the amount you can see the object. The higher the value, the more transparent it is, however it gets fully transparent at value 1. Reflectance changes the amount an object reflects. This can be very helpful for glass or plastic textures, but it doesn't work for most other textures. The collision tool is for toggling the collision, which determines if you can collide with the object or not. On means that collision is enabled, and off means that collision is disabled. The anchor tool is for toggling the object if it is anchored or not. If an object is anchored, then it will stay in place. Anchored means that it will stay, and unanchored means that it will not. The new part tool is for spawning new objects in. In part type, there are 9 parts you can select from. Normal, which spawns a brick. This is just the default brick. Truss, which spawns a truss. This can only be resized on its y-axis. Wedge, which spawns a wedge. Corner, which spawns a corner. Cylinder, which spawns a cylinder. Ball, which spawns a ball. Seat, which spawns a seat. This can be used for regular player sitting. Vehicle seat, which spawns a vehicle seat. This can be used for advanced player settings, such as being a use for a vehicle or moving object. And spawn, which spawns a spawn point. This can be used for setting a place for players to spawn on. A mesh tool is for adding a mesh into your object. I recommend using a normal brick for meshing. There are six types of meshes you can select. A lock. Cylinder. File, which means you can use the ID of a mesh that is uploaded into the creator marketplace. Head. Sphere. And wedge. Resizing a mesh can be different than resizing the part version of the mesh. The texture tool is for either applying decals and textures on the surfaces of objects. For decals, you can select the side and then apply the image ID. It'll put the entire image on the side you choose. You can then set the transparency of the image with the transparency value. For textures, you can select the side and then apply the image ID. It will then repeat the image on the side you chose by studs. You can change the repeat value on its x and y axis, which is how wide and how tall the image is, and also set the transparency value. For example, if you set the x axis value to 1.5, it will stretch the image wide by 1.5 studs. The lighting tool is for setting up lights on a part. There are three types of lights you can choose. Spotlight, which emits a cone-shaped light on the side. This can be altered with multiple things. Color is for setting the color of the light, which works the same as the paint tool. Range is for changing the length of the light, which means it changes the distance it can reach before stopping. Brightness is for setting the brightness of the light, and the higher the value, the brighter the light. Angle is for setting the angle of the light, which means that the higher the value, the wider the light is. Side is for choosing which side the light is being displaced. And finally, shadows is for talking if the light has shadows or not. If it is ticked on, then there will be shadows. Point light, which emits a circular light at the center of the object and surface light, which emits light from the direction of an entire side. It is different from spotlight because it emits from the entire surface rather than just a point on the surface. And finally the decorate tool, which allows you to add three particles. Smoke, which adds smoke. Colors for changing the color of the smoke. Opacity is for how opaque the smoke is. The higher the value, the more you can see the smoke. Size is for how large the smoke is. The higher the value, the more it spreads. Finally, velocity is for setting the speed of the smoke. The higher the value, the faster it spreads. 
There's fire which adds fire, colors for changing the primary color of the fire, while second colors for changing the secondary color of the fire. Heat is for changing the intensity of the fire, the higher the value the taller the flame is. Finally, size is for how large the fire is, the higher the value the larger the overall size of it is. And sparkles which adds colorful sparkles, colors for changing the color of the sparkles. Now into the tips. Tip number one. Movement can be used for precise moving. Because you can set the increment value to a low number, you can move objects to precise positions. This can help in any builds that require extra detail. Tip number two. Direction resizing can be taken advantage of. Using normal direction resizing can be helpful in precise changes. This means that it can help alter details in your models. Both direction resizing can be helpful for keeping the object in the same place while still altering its size. I personally use it for making handles that are in the same location at the center of objects. Tip number three. Center and local pivot rotation are different. Center pivot rotation rotates the center, while local pivot rotation rotates the object as you change it. This means that depending on the build, you should switch between pivots as you rotate certain objects. Tip number four, do not move multiple objects at the same time on local movement. Moving multiple objects at the same time using local movement makes them all move using the same direction you are moving them instead of all moving towards the same direction you are moving. This means that objects may move differently depending on which way they are rotated. Tip number 5. Be creative with paints and materials. Being creative with the paint and material tool can help your buildings pop out. Instead of just using the base colors for painting, use your own colors, or just alter a base color, and use materials as close to your standards as possible. And finally, tip number 6. Change your FOV if you can. Changing your FOV can help you visualize your build more. Instead of having to move your camera closer to the build, you can change your FOV so that you can just see larger detail entirely. Thanks for watching, I'll hopefully make a part 2 next week which will describe the basics of how to build with F3X. If you liked the video please leave a like, and if you want to see more content I recommend subscribing. I heavily appreciate likes and subscribers so thank you. See you next video!